So, just the two packages. package was something I didn't realize was anime until pretty later on because it's gone through a lot of heavy modifications but basically uh, this is a collection of four movies on two discs like it says up there and the origins of this is that there is a Wizard of Oz anime that was made in the mid to late 1980s I guess HBO licensed it I think in a number of places have shown it and these four feature films were made by taking the core elements of the Wizard of Oz, or rather the Oz stories, four of them, four movies, right? And uh, taking the more canonical material from the movies and creating movies out of them. Uh, it's not quite, I'd rather have the series itself. It sounds like that series may still air, it may be available on, in... Canada on Netflix, maybe. Um, but unfortunately, no official DVD release, other than the fact that we got the four movies. And maybe it's not a good series. I have no clue because I would kind of need to have the series and to watch it to tell. It's a, it's a curiosity. But oh well. It's better than nothing. Next up we've got um, Quasar of Stigmata. Season 1 Collection 2. This would be the anime I do believe that is somewhat notorious. And it's uh, being about people who get their superpowers from drinking breath. Nope. Oh. And I think I mentioned having watched it, that I thought it was actually, once you got your head around the concept, actually pretty neatly put together. Next up, we've got Battle Girls Time Paradox, which I have no clue what it is or what it's about, but it has a Sentai, yeah, Sentai Filmworks title that's dubbed because it's also out on Blu-ray. And scantily clad person in front. Probably a, of the more fan service harem sort of variety, maybe. But I haven't seen any evidence of any male characters. I haven't looked. I don't know if I see any. So I guess we'll have to find out. Or maybe y'all already know. And I'm the one who has to find out. Either or. We got the DVD and the Blu-ray versions. So our DVD version we have Green Girl, Red Girl, uh, Blue Girl, Red White Girl, um, Lolly character and Purple Girl. Well, I assume that we look in here, and as is usually the case, we see two of the artworks. Although it's the first and the last artwork, which is interesting. Then the last thing to arrive is uh, Heaven's Lost Property, The Angeloid of Clockwork, which is a Heaven's Lost Property movie. Let's see. It's the usual Funimation release. It's a 
we've got the artwork on the inside and we've got our DVD and Blu-ray version. It's actually probably the other way around. Don't need to hunt for it, but this is probably the DVD and this is probably the Blu-ray version. Knowing them. Whew. So there we go, we got more Heaven's Lost Property. And that's all the new stuff that arrived today, but technically this arrived yesterday. And for those of you who don't know what this is, this is Nisei Monogatari, the sequel to Baki Monogatari. And this one has a rather notorious scene of its own. That I've seen before, of course. It's too notorious to not have seen. So let's go through like so. Once again, these cases have the lockable tabs. People on the inside. Ow. Cut myself doing cooking earlier today. Uh, this is just a suggestion. As an experienced anime DVD collector, do not cut yourself while cooking because it doesn't have as much relevance to anime DVDs as it may have initially been put, as you probably knew based on the way I said it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so... Also inside of it, we got something from that. The proof of purchase with the number, the obligatory booklet of interesting looking information, and this was the back of it. I didn't want to throw it away because I could fit it in the box. Barely. So if I do this, then once again, it fits in the box. And that's all of my additions to the anime collection this week. Which I guess isn't as big as I was hoping. Although some of these titles are a bit more expensive. And Nisei Monogatari, of course, being an Aniplex release, is a little on the pricey side. Oh, jeez. Oremo didn't arrive this week. That means that when it arrives next week, on top of the other things we've done next week, it's probably going to be a pricey update then. Which is fine. So as we come over here, you know, I've been pretty lazy and still not trying to figure out why, how to fix the video processing thing. And for similar reasons, I've not watched a whole lot of anime. I'm wearing the anime shirt. So not everything's changed. But let's see. The few things I did watch were over the past couple of days. And... Hmm. Well, I guess technically I got to rewatch a little bit of Elfin Lead as well. Although I've only... Rewatched three episodes, and I wasn't choosing to rewatch so much as it just happened to be rewatched while I was around. But yeah, I've still rewatched the first three episodes, and I don't know. I think it's kind of intriguing still, sort of like when I first watched it. There's a part of me that wonders how much of that is that it's the first of its kind of show that I saw, whereas maybe people who watched Rin Daughters of Nemo Sign prefer that one in a way? I don't know. It's hard to tell where personal opinion ends and objective fact begins sometimes. Especially when there's a lot of people's opinions that are something you're trying to measure. So blah blah blah. The more important things are the things I probably chose to watch. I say probably because there's still some motivation in terms of rewatching stuff, and it was, it was all stuff rewatched. I didn't watch anything new. But, uh, let's see. I watched, I think, like I mentioned last week, there was a Lane watch imminent, and Lane was watched. Let's all love Lane. I, once again, liked watching it. My interesting revelation watching it this time is that you should probably be careful what drugs you're on when you watch Lane because it occurred to me that certain things like from what I've heard of shrooms, that mushrooms, then uh, yeah, I think if you were tripping on something like 
dead, given my understanding of it, Lane would probably be really fucking terrifying. In fact, not being on drugs and watching it, it's got its kind of intimidating moments, which I think is part of what drives you in. Very different forms of it. It just kind of approaches it from uh, the intimidation aspect from a couple different facets. But, you know, that's kind of what draws me in. I mean, in particular, the first episode of Lane and Lane traveling to school is... There's something about that scene that just draws me into wanting to rewatch the series every single time. And it's always those little things, isn't it? Sort of like on Dot Hack, sign, just hearing the music from that anime always makes me want to fire it up and rewatch the whole series. Sometimes I'm better able to resist it than others. But, anyways. The two, of the two people I watched Lane with, Juan had seen it before, and he, of course, really loved um, rewatching it. You know, I mean, he, he had seen it before and then spent the money to get it on Blu-ray when it's not cheap and he's not, he, he doesn't spend as much money on DVDs as I do. You can tell that it was up there in terms of things he likes. But uh, the other person was watching it for the first time, and I guess I didn't poke around too much to figure out what he thought about it, other than trying to help him come with, up with ideas on how he might be able to interpret the series in order to properly understand it without revealing spoilers, which basically meant that a big explanation happened whenever certain facts were, came up and he, there were certain other facts that may be kind of relevant and I could help him remember what those facts were to maybe hopefully help him develop a com somewhat more coherent picture of the series, assuming of course that there is something of a coherent image of Lane and not this other thing I heard where it's supposed to be interpretable. I mean, it's possible it could be interpretable while at the same time the person who created it actually intended for a certain interpretation to be more correct than others. Or maybe they, they didn't intend it, but you know that's kind of what they had in mind when they made it. Don't know. But Lane was rewatched. I enjoyed rewatching it, and as far as I'm concerned, even though it wasn't exactly watching something new, it was still a very good use of my time. After that, we started watching. Um, the, we watched the first two episodes of Neon Genesis Evangelion, and that's the furthest we got over the weekend. It. I'm surprised we got through as much as we did, given the, that we're probably all three from different time zones and we're coordinating over the internet and whatnot. But, um, Evangelion. You know, I really like the way episode two was executed. It's strange, and I remember the very first time watching it feeling confused, maybe cheated, and then the re the way it revealed its information intrigued me, and then coming back and rewatching it, I've really appreciated it. I really love episodes 13 and 16. But we only watched the first two episodes, and it's. Since I didn't poke too much, I'm not sure if he just reached his sleepiness limit or if. Perhaps he wants something a more. The, the, Okay, so of the two people that I watched Lane with, one of them was also seen Evangelion before and really likes it. Um, actually, I did a bit more, didn't I? But uh, the, the other one, and this is his first time watching it as well, so there's a possibility that the character development aspect of it is maybe not something that appeals to him as much as possible. The symbolism might not, you know, there's a whole lot of things that could make somebody not enjoy it as much, and so I don't know how much those are affecting him. But he does continue to explore anime since he did recently pick more up. Oh well, we watched the first two episodes of Evangelion, and I would have liked to have been able to keep going, but I can understand some needing to stop for certain people. And then the, the you know that actually all happened last night and tonight. I watched um, the girl who leapt through time with my brother, while you know because we weren't doing Batman Arkham City this time. So, um, re-watching that again, there's, I don't think I really pick up anything new from it, other than, yeah, nothing new, but it's a very enjoyable movie to just re-watch. It makes me laugh, it makes me 
feels, I guess. It comes off as a very compelling story. It kind of does a really good job of bringing you in, unsympathizing um, and being amused by the character. The, the, well, I say the character, but I meant like all the characters, but it helps you like stay focused on the main character or view them the right way, which is quite unfortunate because I'm wondering if it's a fluke or not because for those of you who don't know, I have an intense loathing for Summer Wars. Something that I would rather not get into here because I do tend to get very angry ranty about it. And the truth of the matter is that other people might have no problem with it at all. And I'd rather let people who enjoy it continue to enjoy it. Unless you make the mistake of trying to watch it with me. So, all that said... Yeah, I guess that's pretty much everything. I did uh, order everything for March. I had a... Yeah, I can't think of anything terribly noteworthy about March's pre-ordering stuff other than, like, February. There's a lot of late-loaded stuff where the later half of the month has more of the releases than the earlier one from a financial perspective. In fact, the last week of March is going to be particularly pricey. And given that Aremo has been delayed and all this stuff, maybe I could take it easier on the purchasing of or catching up on the old stuff in March. I guess we'll play that one by ear. I know I've already bought some stuff for next week, and if Aremo ships any time now, then that will arrive for next week. And then that means next week's update will be pretty good, probably. And... I guess we do have a couple of Japanese releases. One of them which is officially being released here, which would be the Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn Volume 6, which maybe is the end of it, I th think I get the impression. But yeah, that's pre-ordered. And also of note from the Japanese releases is the second Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha movie released on Blu-ray, which I think said it had English subtitles again. Unless I was just jumping the gun when I pre-ordered it, but I guess I have a month to figure that out, don't I? So, well, there we go. That's anime stuff, so yeah, I guess y'all have a nice week.